Okay, Stuart Kern, um, The Way, really, really catchy song. So it's an F-sharp minor. This is an E4 minor bar chord, the second fret. When you're in this key, your four chord is B minor, and your five chord is C-sharp seven. That means your pinky, rather than playing minor, your pinky floats to the B string, and now your middle finger is obviated. You can just take a break. There's five. You want to start by just putting these three chords in a row. Every minor key song ever written uses the one, four, and five in roughly that approximate um, way. Now, then you start to put those into the order of this of the song. So it's made up their minds and they started packing down, down, up, up, down. Left before the sun came up that day. Now this is cool. He transforms the F-sharp into an F-sharp 7 by adding the middle finger to the G-string and taking the pinky out. And when the car broke down, they started walking. And now to tie the phrase together, he goes F-sharp minor to C-sharp 7. Without ever knowing the way, E7. Anyone can see the road. So now we have a new box, which is the key of A, the relative major key. And the five of that key is E7, or E. They, they function approximately the same way. Um, so the four here is D. But the, the chorus is this, this, this shading game, where he shades and he, he threatens to go back to F-sharp minor, but he doesn't. So it's E, anyone can see the A, E. Now F-sharp minor to C-sharp seven, which makes you think, oh, we might be going back to the minor key. But it keeps going up to D, to false 5, A, and then E, for two measures, and repeat. You can see the shadows wandering off somewhere, they won't make it home if they really don't care, they wanted the highway, they're happy there. Now here comes the C sharp 7 to get us back. Today. of that is that dominant seventh chords or just yeah dominant chords dominant sevens five chords really are portals into keys so if you know the five chord of any key you have a way of modulating into that key because it's a setup chord it's like throwing a pass before a dunk if i'm in the key of f sharp minor c sharp is the five and every time i hear that i expect to hear the f sharp again that tension resolves here but in the key of A, E7 is the five. So every time I hear this, I'm expecting an A major. So that's how you play on a listener's expectations. So now if I go, build with tension and it wants to release here. Tension, release. Modulation with tension. Tension, release. So this is an exercise we're trying just for your ear training. Play that C sharp seven again, which has its own logic, which takes you back here. So when a songwriter wants to do a section in a minor key and a section in a major key, sure, that's not hard. You can do the relative major or the parallel. He's done relative. But you also have to find a convincing way to get from one to the other. And the cliche, not cliche in a bad way, the textbook way is just to find the five of whatever key you're going to. And that's always going to work. It might not be the most elegant or the most interesting, but it's going to be the most workable solution to the problem. And that's what he uses. So the C sharp takes him back to F sharp minor, and the E7 takes him to A. Now, it's a good chance he's playing the whole song with a capo and avoiding bar chords, but your version is going to be replete with them. Have fun.